Roadrunner Photography Tours tutorial on using the quick selection tool um, as a beginning to compositing two images or more together. So we're going to get started. Um, as you can see, I've got this image here. It was taken in Cuba and I like the car. I love the blue and I want to go ahead and I want to pick this uh, car up and I want to move it to another image. So first we need to actually select it out of its environment because obviously having the building and all this other stuff doesn't make sense since I'm going to drop this on into a, des a deserted road in Death Valley. Um, I can't have all these other things going on. So let's start off by doing our selection. So first we're going to go ahead and choose the quick selection tool. So if you go over to the right, for me the right uh, is where I'm going to keep my toolbar. For you, you're probably going to find this uh, information on your left hand side of your uh, Photoshop screen or workspace and you'll see here as I hover the quick selection tool can be found right here under um, this icon you also have a magic wand tool over here it's great for other things but in this particular case we're going to start with the quick selection tool so once I've gone ahead and selected it you'll see that I have a brush with a plus in the middle and um, and at the top on the left right under the word Photoshop you'll see that I've got a, a little plus sign here as well so it just tells you that you're working in an additive brush um, I could switch and go to a negative brush but I find it actually easier to use alt or option to um, go back and forth between adding and uh, uh, deselecting things. So you'll see how I do that in a minute, but let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just start the process of dragging the uh, selection tool around. I like to start just sort of in the middle and work my way out, make sure that I pick up everything, get as close to the edges as I can. You'll see that it jumped out here and grabbed a bunch of other content. Not really ideal, but I can go ahead and fix it in a minute. Same thing, come around this side pick up the side mirrors, pick up this side mirror, pick up the little flyout window. All right, so I've got pretty much everything that I want, but I definitely have more than I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom in using the uh, command or control and the plus key on my keyboard. And now I'm gonna start removing the things that I don't need and adding the things that I've missed. So if you look over here on our left, uh, right outside the passenger window, you'll see there's a little piece of chrome that didn't get picked up. So I'm going to, I zoomed in again, and now I'm gonna change the size of my selection tool by using the left bracket. It'll go smaller, so you can see that. It's still a plus, but it's just smaller. Pick that up, maybe get this little bit of trim right here. I've gone a little too much, it's hard to tell, but it's I can see it. So again and you'll see that I've probably got some of this pillar in the background so if I hold down the alt or option key my plus goes to a minus make that smaller and then I can just push that in a little bit to fix it now I'm gonna go ahead and check my edges this looks pretty good now I've got this um, back the wall behind the car has been picked up so again you'll see my uh, plus go to a minus when I hold down the alt or option key and now I can just drag across and push out the wall. Now for the most part that did okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hit a little plus here, a little minus, a little minus. This is basically a push me pull you kind of moment as you just go back and forth trying to add in, um, add in some track parts of the pixels that you don't want. You just keep following it around, keep pushing and pulling. Now I'm going kind of fast, but if I was really trying to do this for myself, I would probably just take a bunch more time to be very selective and subtle, maybe zoom in even further, but I'm just trying to get the point across about how we do this. So come over here, add in the curvature of the car, take out this background, add in this particular piece of chrome similar to the one on the other side. Now I've got this sort of jump where I'm getting even more information out of the background same idea go ahead and hit minus and sometimes you'll find you need to minus more than you intended but photoshop starts to realize where you're saying to not keep information and where you want it back so it will start finding the edge as you push um, so we'll go ahead and subtract some more but we want this corner of this uh, side window now we don't have to be perfect because in fact, and then for some reason it is totally not doing what I said it was going to do, um, I can also fix the mask in uh, after we've actually created, I can fix it once it becomes a mask. 
So the selection doesn't have to be entirely perfect. We're just trying to get as close as we can because that will make life substantially easier down the line. Now here we have some wall behind um, through the little hole in the side window so we want to back that out. We can do that by creating a minus and just starting to fill it and find the edge and Photoshop will find the edge with us. If we make this uh, selecting tool a little bit smaller we'll be able to get most of this little piece right here. Okay, I'm get rid of this selection down here where we had still some wall in the background. Now we need to get rid of this guy's jeans. Make sure we get our side mirror. Move this jeans here. Make sure we add in the little arm for the side mirror. Now we're going to keep subtracting as we go across. Fine, we're picking up little pixels here and there, so we'll have to go clean that up. Make sure we get the whole handle. So even though it does this really weird jump, you'll see that it actually does a pretty good job of um, snapping back to what I had selected. So we just need to like clean up a little bit down here. We'll have most of our selection done. Again, if I was sitting down to do this as a final image for myself, the, I would be much slower taking my time to make sure that I didn't um, leave any sort of weird bumps or edges but for now I'm just trying to get this to a point where I can finish the cons high big concepts of this tutorial All right, so go ahead and we'll grab some of the ground because ultimately in my composite it'll I will have a shadow I will probably create a shadow a different way but it's not going to kill us to have it for now. Go ahead and grab this. All right. So I think for the most part, oops, I didn't need to fix that right there. So to get bigger and smaller, I'm just using pl uh, command and control plus and, mi uh, plus and minus um, to zoom in and out. Now, Photoshop's always going to struggle when you have similar colors. So the cement and the color of the blue right here is pretty similar. And so it's going to be a bit more of a challenge to let it do all the work. And that's why we can clean the mask up later. I just wanted to fix this area right here. We can't open this side without it. So there we go. Uh, that's probably good enough now. As I say, I go do more work. Go figure, huh? That's exactly this kind of process. It just keeps coming as you get in there and get the details. It just you just got to keep working through it. Compositing images takes an incredible amount of patience. Okay, so now I think we have a pretty good selection. So now that our selection's done, I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually expand the selection just in case I've missed some pixels that I wanted to pick up. This is a way to do it. So I'm going to come up to um, our menus at the top where it says select, and I'm going to choose modify, and I'm going to choose expand. And I think I'll do like three pixels. This is a guesstimate. But basically what it's going to do is push these marching ants out three pixels on each, all the way around. So I'm going to hit OK. Now it's kind of imperceivable to us, but it's picked up those pixels. Or it's certainly at this magnification, it's imperceivable. Now, it looks like I actually missed a little bit here. Those are These dancing ants or marching ants are not connected. Uh, so I'll need to fix that. But we can do that in a minute. So now that we've got our selection made, and push this back out. I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to the right at the very bottom of the layers panel, and I'm going to select this icon that looks like a camera. It's a white, sort of a gray, lighter gray box with a darker gray circle. And if you hover, it says add layer mask. 
I'm going to go ahead and add that. And you can see straight away that we've got in the car. Most everything that we want is here, so that's good. But we also have these little random lines around the car where there were marching ants that we didn't see. And so it's picked up some pixels. So what we want to do to get rid of that is go ahead and choose, uh, while the mask is selected, we want to choose the brush tool. So you can either come over and choose your brush tool or hit the B key on your keyboard for brush. And we want to have our foreground to be black because basically what we're trying to say is we want to hide these like random pixels. We don't want them as part of the selection. So we want to go ahead and switch it. You can either hit the X key or you can hit this up and down arrow. And then next we want to come up to the very top on our layer, I mean brush options, excuse me, our brush options. We want our opacity at 100, but we don't, we don't want our mode as normal because right now if we were to paint, um, not with black because you can't see it, but I'll paint here. If I paint white on that black section with normal, I'm actually painting white mask on and I'm revealing these people who are standing by the car. So we don't want to do that. We actually want to go to overlay because if we accidentally were to hit with black on the things we are trying to reveal, it disappears completely. So that not being the effect we want, we don't want to harm the mask we've taken time to create. We want to change this to overlay, which allows us now still at a white on the foreground color, go all over the black without any impact. So pretty good feature. Um, just need to know that you need to do it. What it does is, is it looks for gray pixels in white and if you paint over those gray pixels in black and if you paint over that with black they will disappear. So as you can see these sort of random lines are disappearing. I can come up, there's a few up here, a couple here, guys pants over here. Now on the flip side where I have gray in my selection that I want to keep, if I switch my foreground to white and then I paint around the edge, I can actually enhance my selection um, in case I missed anything that I actually wanted to pick up. So I'm just kind of going around my edges really fast. All right, probably good enough. I don't have any glaring issues except for the one here on this window. Now because I want to pick up, oh, see here this is where we got some more black. I got in close and now I can see that these pixels don't belong. So I can kind of clean up the edges. Now one thing I do see is that I have this spot missing right here on this flat, uh, the side mirror, or excuse me, side window. So for this case, I actually want to go back to normal because I want to paint, and I want to paint with white to pick it up. The overlay technique will not fill in pixels that don't exist to begin with. It just corrects little things that are sort of shadowed. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my foreground is uh, color is white again by hitting the X key, turns it white. Come over here, I made my brush smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and, I, because it's a straight line, this makes it really easy. I'm gonna go ahead and left click, come down below the gap, hold down the shift key, left click again, and it fills in. Straight lines are awesome because if you hold the shift key, it will draw the straight line for you. Um, I'm going to come up here, maybe add a little bit. Now I, I see that I've got some issues, but I have a trick for that. I could sit here with black and edge it, similar to how we were kind of pushing and pulling the mask to begin with. I, I don't want to do it that way. It just takes forever to go through that exercise. Just knowing that you can, that is a way to do it. Just keep painting black and white, black and white as you want to correct the mask. But I've got um, a technique that'll get us a lot further and then if we need to do that a little bit after we can. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this car out a little bit, see if I have anything else. So here's some more building I don't want. Again, for this overlay, foreground needs to be black because this is part of the area that we're hiding. Make the brush bigger and just get rid of stuff. So let's take push out one more and just take a good look at it. So at first blush, this isn't too bad. Now, let's correct the halo, because there's definitely some halo around the edge of this car. With our mask selected, we're going to go and pick from the filter menu, blur, and then from the blur menu, Gaussian blur, or Gaussian blur, but he says it different. For this technique, we only need a couple pixels, so we're going to make sure our radius is two pixels, and we're going to hit OK. So what this has basically done is soften the edge of the mask. So 
In some situations, that might be exactly what you want for a mask and you don't need to fix it. But for a car that has a hard edge to begin with, you don't really want soft blurry edge. So what we're going to do is next is add a levels adjustment to the mask that we've created. So instead of choosing a, layer, a levels adjustment from here, which is a creates a layer, we don't really want that. That would change the, the picture of the car, we would add contrast to the car. We really just wanna manipulate this mask. So with the mask selected, you can see it's selected because it's got the white square around it. We're gonna come over to image, adjustments, levels, or command it or control L will get you this as well. I'm gonna go ahead and select this we get the levels adjustment and you will see we do not have an adjustment layer it is a specific adjustment being made to the mask only now on this um, levels adjustment you'll see there's a highlights carrot a midtone carrot and a shadows carrot we're going to grab the shadows carrot and we are going to pull this down to the right and as we do it you'll see if you look closely say right here on the um, roof of the car you'll start to see that that halo is retracting and as we pull it forward, it gets more and more and more refined. So there you go, done. Almost all the halos done. Now, if we wanted to do this again, we certainly can and collapse it some more. Um, but at some point you have to be careful because you will start to lose little fine details. Like we lost our mask um, where on the side window, you can see there's a hole again. So we'll need to go back and refix that. So again, we're still um, on the mask, we'll come back in. And we've probably went a little too aggressive, but this is where we can come back with white, make it nice and small. Oops, see, it didn't really work, and that's because I was in overlay. So if you ever have a problem with your brushes, always go to see what the mode is. And all I need to do is a couple quick clicks, and I've got that mirror, excuse me, side window back where it was supposed to be. You can also tell that this got nice and tight around the handle of um, the side mirror bar, arm or whatever it's actually called in real life. Now I could actually sit here and go clean up the mask some more with the way that I had showed you just a few seconds ago. Just working back and forth and across the mask. Here I've still got some building. Um, because we don't want that in here, we're gonna wanna paint with black to hide it get a dent like this you can add it back now I will say that you can spend all the time in the world to be super attentive with your masks but for the most part when people stop to look at your image they're not going to be at 200 or 300 percent on the image they're actually going to be looking at it as a picture and it's a whole picture once it's composited in with everything else so knowing that you know I would say get it you know close but it doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to look like it belongs where it is so you see i'm just kind of going back and forth getting a sort of more realistic edge look like it was a kind of weird hard edge there that i didn't want so anyway i would end up going through this process um around the entire car Again, straight lines, you can use our trick that creates a straight line, which is holding down the shift key, left click. So we'll do it here to kind of make this uh, rail a little bit bigger. Left click there, come over here and left click. Boom, it's built. Um, so it's really easy to do some things, and then the rest of these little ones that are a little bit more complicated, you just need to kind of play with and work your way through all of your edges. Now this edge would take a lot more time and again, it's the same process, so I'm not going to go too crazy on it. In this case, I want the brush to be white. This is that area where the cement was, and it just Photoshop is going to have a hard time finding the pixels. So, again, just kind of pushing out, doing it in a way that you're not getting too dramatic. Now, if you want to see what you've really missed, you can add it all back, and then just remove what you didn't need. So we're pretty good. We're not perfect by any means, um, but fairly close. Close enough to at least go on with this uh, exercise. 
So now we've got the car selected, we've got everything that we need. What we really need to do now is move it into the other image. So to do that, you want the Move tool. So you can hit the V key, and that will change your cursor. Let me make this bigger so you can see it. It'll change from um, the Brush tool to an arrow with four arrows. That's the Move. That's the Move tool, and it's a V as in Victor key. Or you can come up here to the toolbar. Again, yours will be on your left, and select the four arrows. Get you to the same place. Now to move this, once we have the move tool, if we left click and hold, you can see that we can now move this car around our image. And with it, we're moving the mask. The reason we know that is because our mask over here in the layer has, um, it's closed. If we unclick that, it's no longer attached. We would actually move the car and not the mask. And that, I don't really wanna try that, but that's what will happen. So we wanna make sure that there's a linking symbol here so that these two stay together. Now, left click and hold, drag it up, and hover over your other image. In this case, it says Death Valley. You can see a picture of Death Valley. Come into the frame, just drop the car. This is just telling me that the source are different. Do I want to proceed? The white balances are different. Do I want to proceed? The answer is yes. So now I've dropped the car into Death Valley. Um, from here, there's a ton more work to do, and I'm not gonna take this picture to its final conclusion because that could take me hours to really get this to where I want it to be, but this is just to show you how to use the quick selection tool, how to take care of halos with the Gaussian blur and then the levels adjustment, and just some ideas about what to think about when you start to composite. So I've dropped the car in, the question is, is does it fit? Does it, does it sit right in the image? And at first blush, to me, the answer is no. So there's a couple things I would do and start to work to manipulate. First, I'd actually want to change the way the road is. I feel like the car feels like it needs to be down on the road a little bit more or the road needs to be up a little. So basically, I just unlocked um, the, la the background layer. So you see here it says background. I can just click on the lock it goes away, it turns into layer zero. That allows me to manipulate the layer. If I hit free transform, which is command or control T for the keystroke or edit and choose free transform, you can see the command or control T here. Now I get a bounding bar around the Death Valley image. And even though it's around the car, because I've selected the Death Valley image layer, I'm only impacting that image at this point. Once I have the bounding bar, I can right click and choose perspective. In this case, that's the adjustment I want. I could choose any of the transform tools, but perspective is what I'm looking for. With that, I can now pull the car, uh, excuse me, pull the road a little bit closer. Forces the car down, makes it look like I got lower to the road when I shot this. And it now starting to feel like it's a little bit better place for a car that's coming straight at me. If I hit enter, it saves that adjustment. Now. Quickly, um, just at a glance, the Death Valley image actually looks like it is a little bit tinted green. I clearly didn't have the right white balance. Camera picked up something else in the atmosphere that made it look sort of this color. It was kind of this weird, nasty, overcast day. So to fix that, just as a, just as a quick aside, I'm going to go, because I'm still on my layer for Death Valley, I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Raw, bring up the Camera Raw, raw tool and I'm going to pick the jet white balance uh, icon here so you can see I'm hovering it's the third icon in from the left I'm gonna go ahead and choose it now generally um, you want something gray a good medium gray I could probably click on the asphalt but you know I know that um, this granite on the mountains is gray so I'm gonna go ahead and just click and see what happens and immediately it warms up the image I'm not gonna worry about the sky right now because again I haven't processed this image at all I'm just showing you how to correct the white balance with a minor just one click I'm able to sort of clean that up because I shot raw if I'm not sure that's the color I can actually bang around and find a happy color so this time I tried the asphalt and that actually is kind of nice I didn't need to wash it out as much as I did so the asphalt might have been a better choice this pile back here could be an option when all else fails you can choose white as a starting point you'll see over on the right that the temperature sliders have moved from their uh, neutral position to get uh, to get the right color balance of course uh, that Photoshop is guesstimating on based on where I'm clicking if you're not completely satisfied with Photoshop at this point at its decision on color you can actually come in here and manipulate manipulate these sliders yourself and either cool it down or warm it up to your liking 
So for now, I'm just going to hit OK so you can see this transformation take place. So the road is up. The color is a better balance. Did I just? OK, so now that's that. Now we're going to grab, I just needed to check it really quick. Um, now I'm going to grab the car, and I'm going to free transform this, because I can move it around, and I can scale it. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. These are all part and parcel of the process to creating a composite image. So again, Command or Control T. I get bounding bars around the whole image. Now remember, we have this whole image of three cars in Cuba, um, but you're only seeing the blue car because of my mask. So when it goes to the bounding bar, it's not like right around the car. It's got the whole image still. Um, now I can sit, I can move this, I can right click, choose scale, I can make so I can make it bigger without losing its shape. I can drop it on the road. Go ahead and hit enter. Now. At this point, you can see that the asphalt's different. I mean, I've got a lot of work to do here. I would add an, I would add shadows. I might turn on the headlights. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about all the things I would want to do to it. Then I would tone the whole image so that it would work together. I still have to process it. Nothing's been sharpened. Nothing's been changed. It's just getting this, you know, kind of the images together so I can start to think about how I want to manipulate the pieces to create a whole. Um, I would say that this could take me hours to finish and hundreds of layers. So really just the focus is how to use the quick selection tool, how to, to then how to create a mask, and then how to refine the mask to sort of, one, get rid of halos, and how to use the brush tool to fix things that you want to fix. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, it's a small part of a much bigger process. I have a bunch of different videos on compositing. You actually check out our Roadrunner uh, page on YouTube. You will see that there's a number of different masking videos out there, as well as seven episodes that take you from early selections down through more refined selections um, on your way to compositing. So lots of information out there. Um, I wish you the best of luck and look forward to seeing you at another tutorial. Thank you for watching.